In this video I'm going to go through the process of downloading, installing and configuring SeatMonk on a system where it's not been run before. So this is exactly the process that you would go through if you were installing SeatMonk for the first time. I'm going to do this on a Windows system here but the process is essentially the same on all of the platforms that we support which is Windows, Linux or uh, Mac OS. The first thing we're going to need to do is to actually download the correct file from the SeekMonk project web page. So if I have a look, this is the uh, project web page. And on here, there is a download now link, which if I click on that, there are a couple of different files depending on which system you're on. In our case, we're on a Windows system, so we go for this Windows or Linux zip file. On a Mac, you'd go for a compressed DMG image uh, to get hold of the software. Also on here is an install text file, which has all of the written instructions for how to install and configure the program. So everything I'm going through here, uh, there's written instructions for on that page as well. I've actually done the download already. So I have this zip file present on my system already. But before I go ahead and do anything with that, there are a couple of other things I also need to set up. So SeekMonk itself is a Java program, so I need to make sure that I have Java installed and working on my system. Java is again a free cross-platform program, so I can go to the java.com website to get hold of that if I don't have it on my system already. If you're on Linux you'll probably have it but if you're on Windows or Mac you probably won't. I can click on the button here that says free Java download but don't just take what it offers you with the big red button. The important thing here is that you get the 64-bit version of Java which is not what you're offered by default. So in this case I need to go through to the link that says see all Java downloads and if I'm on Windows, the one that I want is the Windows offline 64-bit version of Java. And if I click on that and run the file that downloads, it will put the ver right version of Java onto my system for me. If I'm on a Mac, there's a slight extra step you need to go through in that on a Mac, you do not want the Java runtime environment, which is what we're getting here. You need to get the Java development kit because the command line version of Java that SeekMonk relies on is only in the development kit on a Mac for some reason. Uh, which means that you need to follow this link here that says looking for the JDK and if I click through to that and then go to JDK downloads and then JDK download then inside there is the Mac OS 10 DMG file for the JDK so that's what I would actually need once you've installed Java, it's probably a good idea to check that it's actually correctly installed and working on your system. So for that, you would need to open up a command shell. So on Windows, this is the CMD program. On a Mac, it will be terminal.app. Uh, and on Linux, it'll be whatever shell you're used to using. And inside there, if you type Java space minus version, you should see a little message come back from Java to say which version you're running and it's worth checking also that you're definitely looking at the 64-bit version of Java which is what you want. If you get an error message then it means there's a problem with the Java install so you need to go back and do that bit again. In addition to Java the other program that we are going to need at some point is R so SeekMonk doesn't absolutely require R but some of its functionality does rely on the presence of a local R installation so R is a statistical language uh, which is used for a lot of different kinds of analysis and a lot of the statistical uh, filters within SeekMonk are now implemented in R uh, again it's free and cross-platform so in this case I would go to the R project page which is cran.rproject.org and on the front page of that there are links to the Linux, Mac and Windows versions of R. So in this case on Windows I can just click onto that link, say install R for the first time and then download and run the installer for that and that will put R onto my machine. Okay, now I've got all of those uh, installed onto the machine I can actually get SeekMonk up and running. So I have the zip file that I downloaded from the SeekMonk project page so I'm just going to open that in my uh, zip file program so in this case it's winzip on Windows but whatever's on your system will be fine 
I then need to uncompress it, so in this case I can just drag the SeatMonk folder out onto my desktop. That will give me a file I can actually work with. And if I look inside there, I'll see all the files that are included in the SeatMonk installation. To actually start running SeatMonk on Windows, I would run the SeatMonk.exe uh, executable file. On Linux, I would run the SeatMonk launcher, so the file that's just called SeatMonk. Uh, and on Mac, Mac OS, instead of seeing all of these files, you would just see a single SeatMonk application that you could just double click on. OK, so I can just double click on the SeatMonk executable to launch the program. Now, because this is SeatMonk running for the first time on this system, I get this extra little welcome screen to help me set the program up. There's a few things that we need to set up. The first thing, which is what we're doing on this first screen, is that we need to give it a couple of folders to use to save data. Um, one of these is the cache folder. So the cache folder is simply a temporary folder where data is written and uh, read whilst the program is running, but no data is permanently stored there. By default, it's going to put a folder called seatmonk underscore cache into your home directory, but if you want it to go somewhere else, you can press the browse button and just select wherever you want it to go. Uh, that folder would ideally be on a local disk drive. You don't want to be putting that on a network drive because firstly no data is permanently stored there so you don't need to protect this data and secondly a lot of data is written and read and deleted whilst the program's running so you want to keep the speed of access to that drive as quick as possible so a local disk is better. The other folder we set up is a folder to store the genome annotation information for the genomes that we're later going to use. Again, by default, it puts a folder called uh, seatmonk underscore genomes into your home directory, but if you want to put it somewhere else, that's fine. Just press browse, go and select a folder somewhere else, and that's where your genomes data will go. In this case, I'm going to accept the defaults and just say start using seatmonk. Okay, the other thing that we need to set up now is the link between seatmonk and R. Now at the moment this isn't set up, so I get an error saying couldn't find a valid R installation, but there's a button to say detect R and it will go and try and find R on your system. So if I press that it says it's found an R installation on here and do I want to use this? Um, that's fine in this case and I'm just going to use that. If I had more than one R installation on my system and I want to use a different one, I can say no and it'll bring up a file browser and just allow me to select where R actually is. It's now found R, so it's going to do some checks. In addition to just the core R language, uh, SeatMonk also makes use of a number of R packages. Um, and because this is a new installation, we don't have those. So again, it's going to give me a button to say install the R dependencies. So if I press that, I'll actually see a little R session open up and SeatMonk will download and install the packages that it relies on. On a completely fresh system, this might take several minutes to complete. There's quite a lot of stuff to install. Um, on this machine, because I've got some of these packages already, it shouldn't take too long, but it should sort itself out and just install all of the stuff that it actually needs. Okay, that's just completed, so it will close, and then do one final check uh, to make sure that it's, everything's working, and if everything is then okay, we should see a little green tick appear here, like that. Um, so SeatMonk is now fully set up and ready to use.